Welcome to the Never Been Promoted podcast, where we're all about helping you cut the tie to all that holds you back. The excuses, the fears, the people, that sense of entitlement. Cut the ties so you can unleash your inner entrepreneur. Your host, Thomas Helfrick, is on a mission to make more entrepreneurs in the world and make them better at entrepreneurship. Welcome to another episode of Never Been Promoted, where we're here to help you unleash your entrepreneur. Hi, I'm Thomas Helfrick, your host. If this is your first time here, it's a hope it is the first of many. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Our mission is to help entrepreneurs get better at entrepreneurship. And we're doing this through the stories and journeys of other entrepreneurs, wherever they are on their journey, just starting, just planning in the middle of it, exiting. You can learn something from their journey. And that form of micro mentoring really helps you. Uh, you know, kind of cut the tie, so to speak, to the things that hold you back, the anchors in your life, those excuses you know you're making, and all those fears for some reason you still want to hold on to. So we're going to kind of help you think through this. If you can get one thing out of today's show, you've done what you needed to to, to move forward. Uh, before we get going, meet our guest today. I'd love if you guys listen. This is so important to the community and to the uh, guests. If you could do the five star review on Apple's uh, on Apple on on Spotify on Amazon. That stuff, uh, those reviews, that just simple a task of just saying, hey, I like it, uh, really helps bring more attention to our mission. And if you could try the YouTube channel at youtube.com at never been promoted. Um, enough shameless promotion here. Let's let's actually dive in with our guest, Greg Moore. Am I saying that right? Moore? Moore? Yes, sir. Moore. Moore. M-O-H-R. See how I did that? That's a marketing technique to draw attention that's more, but there's this unique spelling. So Greg Moore, and they're going to be like, oh, M-O-H-R. Uh, you're up. You're the, you're the franchising like maven. You're like a Wall Street Journal bestseller on the topic. You uh, you seem to know what you're doing here. So um, thank you, by the way, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Thomas. It's an honor. It's a uh, it's it's traditional here that we're going to start with an icebreaker question. And I was looking at you. If you're not if you're listening, he has a background with unique things back there. But he's got this thing that looks like a, like a like a wrestling belt. So here's my question to you: If you were professional wrestler what would your theme song be oh i i i kind of like that rocky thing theme song on that one. Oh, the like i have a tiger yeah yeah i like that, a little, that one always got, oh, yeah that one always got me going it's a good one it's a like an old old school i like that that's not like that. I, you know mm-hmm. accepted it's totally accepted okay you want to take a minute do your uh, origin story, the backstory, and how you kind of got into this whole franchising game? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, again, I'll, I'll keep it short. I, I could talk for, for a long, long time, but we'll, we'll keep it down there. To get started, we'll have to go back into the Wayback Machine. So back when I was in high school, mo- back in the late 70s, most of us folks back then, we got jobs at fast food places. Uh, mine just happened to be Taco Bell. Maybe they were hiring at the time. No idea. I just got into that one, moved up in the Taco Bell world, and I come to find out I was actually working for a master franchiser, and I started helping her with her restaurants throughout the Sacramento, California area, building those up. Really enjoyed the experience. They're really just wonderful, great team of people to work with, easy to do. Fast forward after 15 years of being a restaurant manager, 15 years of being a microelectronic circuit engineer on that, I went, now I got my degree in electrical, uh, bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and physics, went on to get a master's degree in business. Uh, I read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That one just about ruined my corporate career for me, or actually did ruin my corporate career for me. I started getting into other businesses, real estate uh, investment. I got into uh, rental properties. Me and an engineering friend bought a dry cleaners, privately owned dry cleaners, storage units. Did that for a while. I eventually, after getting my uh, master's degree, got out of the corporate world completely, sold off my shares of the privately owned businesses to my buddy, who was an engineer, who also got out of the corporate world at the same time. And I said, I've got to get into my own business. That privately owned business was a bit of a challenge for me. Didn't know anything about dry cleaning at all. So we had to learn it all ourselves. Uh, But we did a little bit of a challenge. I thought that franchising thing was really cool. I want to get into that again. So I went out there, uh, started clicking on all sorts of franchises. Finally found a franchise consultant who knew they existed, really streamlined the process, made it very simple and easy, a lot less confusing. And together, he put me into a great franchise system, ran that for a couple of years. And I thought, you know, I like what that franchise consultant person was doing. He gets to help people all over the world realize their goals and their dreams of business ownerships. So I went back to him and said, teach me what you do. 
And that was, it was over 10 years ago. And I haven't looked back since. It's an interesting market because there's uh, people want to become their own business leadership for financial freedom, for uh, just second revenue, or just change of life. I mean, there's a number. The thing is, you could put your money in the wrong spot and create a horrible situation for yourself, right? You could be like, oh my God, I just bought another job. I've got something that I have no interest in doing. I picked, I picked something that I thought I wanted, like a passion that is actually a bad business. Like having that consultant, I, and I talk about your, your value piece there, is it's so critical because it's you're guiding them on what, who they are, you know, their financial statements, and also what they're trying to accomplish out of it, right? I mean, I love those space you're in. There's not, there, there are different variants of you. So, um, there are guys who, who are really caring about their commissions and there are guys who really care about their customers. That's an easy question for you. Um, which do you care about? Oh, you know, the the, uh, the clients. Because I got to tell you, when I, uh, when I talk to people, and I learned this pretty quick, it's all about education. So first off, franchising is a great route to go. Worked out great for me. But franchising is not right for everybody. I'm not going to try and convince you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, because for some people, it's just not. Mm-hmm. And I, we've talked through them, and I've worked with people and educate them on franchising, find the right franchise for them, and it's just not the right time. They're not ready to sign that check. They're not ready to take the time out of their day to do it. Uh, that's fine. I've had them come back three years later and say, okay, now's the right time on that. And so many of my people send me their friends and their family members when they're through with me. That that makes me really feel really good about that. And quite a few of them have gone on to become rookies of the year in their franchise system. So I love working with people. I educate them, but it's really about getting you into something that you like. So basically you'll tell the world about me. I kind of love that. So who isn't it for franchising? If you're not coachable, um, it's, it's not for you. You got the main one uh, thing that you got to be is coachable on that. So you've got a franchise system. Now, People think that they're going to tell you, you know, exactly what you got to do. Well, they're going to show you exactly what you got to do, but there's still some creativity in there. And that's how franchise systems grow. But you've got to be coachable from the start uh, and you've got to be ready to make that investment commitment. And the time commitment doesn't have to be full time. Many semi absentee business out there, 15 to 20 hours a week. But you've got to be at that point in time in your life when you've got the desire to do something different, to be more successful. And to realize those dreams and those goals. Like, what does entrepreneurship mean to you just personally? Doing what I want, when I want. It's that freedom, time, money, all of it. What's up? What's the mindset and maybe the set of skills that are behind that mindset that makes that happen? Really a desire. A desire to get to where you want to be. You know, I remember a lot of people will define it different ways, willpower, strength, or what have you. I remember back when I weighed 230, 230 pounds and I wanted to lose that weight because it wasn't very healthy. And, you know, I went out with the engineers, we'd have lunch and I'd take half that lunch and throw it in the to-go box right away. Wouldn't drink my Cokes, even if they were free, because it was my desire to reach that goal that I wanted to get. And that's really what a good trait of being an entrepreneur is is you've got a goal that you want to reach and you have that desire within you to reach that goal and do what it takes to get there. You know, it's funny. Uh, I'm a smooth 235. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm kind of short. I don't feel that chunky right yeah. now, but man, you, I'm going to have to drop the poundage if you said it like that. Half of your... All right. Um, if you're uh, <laughs> you're chasing gold, right? And it's interesting. because I backed up four years ago when I first started my company. I would have been a, such a terrible franchise pick because I would have been coachable, but I, I had to do my zero to hero. Like I had that in me. I wanted to start my own thing. Now I'm four years in and I look back on the money I've spent with marketing and trying things. I'm like, it would have been a whole hell of a lot easier just to buy a franchise package <laughs> because I would have had a blueprint and I would have had, you know, but, but you mentioned the one thing. I, I don't know if I would have had the wherewithal to just listen and follow it and execute the plan. And I think there's there's those who are coachable, which I, I'm certainly one who was even back then. But there's also those who, who haven't quite gone through the zero to hero. And they, and they they don't know they're not coachable yet. Does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like they're, they, they want to do their own thing. And, and, and so how do you work through that candidate? Yeah, absolutely. So um, entrepreneurs, 
people who are entrepreneurs already. So I work with aspiring entrepreneurs and seasoned entrepreneurs, both. My younger ones, 25, 30 years old, those entrepreneurs that haven't done it a whole lot yet, they're a little bit more challenging because they, they've got the you know desire just to go out there and just to get it done and do it themselves or looking for different ways to do it. They're a little bit more of a challenge. My seasoned entrepreneurs, uh, you know, I've come across people who have you know, started three or four businesses and I'm like, why are you coming to me? Why don't you just go out there, start a business yourself and let's turn it into a franchise together? And they're like, no, I've been through all that before. I know what it takes to get that business up and going. And I do not want to go through that again. I just want to own another business. Nice and simple. Step right in. Get it going right away. So that's that's a challenge. But we work through it. There's still plenty of creativity that you can do as a franchise e. But always get to know the systems first before you start getting too, too creative. I've had people come in that got a little too creative too early. That doesn't always work out. Um. And so are there certain franchises, though, that allow you to not have that corporate boss feel and, and feel truly free to own? Or they they all kind of have some level of accountability up that you're, you can't escape? Well, they're all going to have accountability on, on that, Thomas. Each and every one of them is going to want to make sure because they don't want that territory to sit there and do nothing. So they, you know, you've the only franchise that can come into that territory. So they want that territory producing. So they're going to be out there. They're going to have some key indices for you on that to help you produce. But it's not like they're breathing down your neck. Now, different ones are going, to, are going to be a little bit different. If you get into a franchise system that's got, you know, three or 4,000 franchisees in it, they don't want people going out outside the box too often. They want to keep control of everything, you know, like a McDonald's. They don't want you to be too, go out there and get too crazy because when you and I go into McDonald's, Thomas, we want the exact same thing every single time. Yeah. Uh, we don't necessarily want to go into the one that's gotten real creative and all of a sudden it's got all these, you know, they're smoking a, you know, a, a pig back there or something like that. They've got other restaurants for that. So if you want to be a little more creative, if you want to be able to shape that franchise a little bit more, then you probably want to look at something like an emerging franchise system that only has five or 10 franchisees yet and are just starting out. Now they got more room because they haven't quite defined themselves completely yet on that one. So you've got more room to grow with them. You've got some room that you can start working with that franchise who actually built that system and start building it into something different. It just depends on, you know, how much uh, you want input into it versus how much you just want to step into a proven model that has reproduced itself 100 different times, 100 different cities and different states and where you're at in life as far as uh, which which direction you want to go. What's up uh, with your book? Talk about that a little bit. You wrote a book about this. It's a, it's a Wall Street Journal bestseller. Tell, tell me what you're covering in the book and, uh, you know, you know, who reads that? Like, who, who, when, or when should you pick up that book to read? I guess probably a better question. So I uh, published that just about two years ago. And the reason I published it after doing this for around 10 years is that I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. So I thought with all these questions that I get over and over again, I thought, why not just put it all down into a book so people can have an idea of what franchising is all about? So what it is, it's a step-by-step process of what I will take you through. Well, you and I, Thomas, will sit down together to go through as far as looking at where have you been, where are you at now, where do you want to be, and then how to investigate that franchise system. I've got real world examples of people that I worked with in there on that, but it's a really good place for people to get started who are not really too sure just yet whether or not they want to get into franchising because it's going to it'll walk you through the whole process on their step by step. You want to look for the franchise disclosure documents, franchise attorneys, funding. And my last chapter in the book actually has one on becoming a franchise if you are a business and you want to turn your business into a franchise. In your own journey, like, what would be your hallmark, you know, the proudest moment, like you know, the career shaping success story? Uh, proudest moment I had was back when um, probably I had a guy call me up three years after he had. Uh, I got him into a franchise and I usually try and keep track of my people for a while and, uh, and see how they're doing, but they get busy and, and, you know, we don't always get together. He called me up three years later and left a message. I need to talk to you, Greg. And I'm like, Oh, what's that all about? So he goes, I we'll finally got a hold of me. He goes, Greg, this has been a great franchise system. I really love it. And I'm like, okay. He says, I built it up to where it is now. Uh, you know, I made rookie of my year, my first year. I'm three years into it. It's making a lot of money. Let's sell it. I, I let, it was a good adventure. Let's go get into another adventure now. I'm like, wow. So 
those are the things that I like. And I just I got a hold of another lady who, when I first started, uh, just over 10 years ago, and she's still doing the same franchise 10 years later on that one. And those, that sort of thing, you know, I, I've got lots of stories like that. It just really makes me feel good. I had a couple that were looking at a, uh, what were they looking at? They're looking at a brewery in Alvalde. That's great. They were in real estate investing. And I was working with the husband. The wife was kind of in the background, but she had some good questions. And they wanted to get in. They finally decided on, you know, we talked a lot. They got into an, an electrical services franchise where that's what they wanted to get into. And they were going to do it part time, semi absentee. So at the very last moment, uh, the wife stood up and just said, you know what? We're not going to run that semi absentee. I can do that. I'm going to run that business. That's my business to run. And uh, here it is a year later. And, and they're, they're rookies of the year. She's rookie of the year on that one. And those sort of things that just, you know, just putting people into the right franchise and watching them succeed just just really feels good. Are there many really challenging moments, though, that you, you know, you couldn't overcome or you're, you know, you're just working through now? Oh, some of the challenging moments was one person that I put into franchise franchising that uh, she wanted to be real creative. And as I said, you know, get to know the system first before you come too creative. Uh, so I was working with her on that. Usually I don't work with them too much after I get them into the franchise system. The franchise system takes over. The franchise or takes over and do it. But I still try and stay with them to make certain that they're doing well, uh, help them overcome any hurdles that they're going through. And she was. Um, she was in Las Vegas Valley and she was in the uh, hospitality industry, hotel, motels, gaming industry. And she was a vice president and she picked up some uh, tutoring franchises, uh, tutoring franchise, three territories. And she said, you guys aren't doing anything in the hotel motel industry. They're like, yeah, we've never you know, tried that business model. This is our business model. This is what we do. Follow this and your chances of success are greater. She said, well, I'm going to try hitting up the hotels and motels. And they're like, that's cool. We never tried it. But, you know, if you want to do it, you go right ahead. Um, it didn't work out too well, unfortunately. That was really a challenging start for her. And, you know, when you put people into there and they're and you're working with them, you want to make certain they do good because, you know, they're spending a lot of money to do that, uh, to get there in there. And you don't want uh, you don't want the reputation of putting somebody into a franchise where they didn't work out. So that's why I really care about my people. So we worked through it and she went back and started using their model and doing what they said to do. Uh, and uh, she's then she she shot back up there and she's she's off to a, a good start after that little blip in there. That was a challenging few moments or many, many moments for me back then. Yeah, I've heard that sometimes you shouldn't pick a franchise that you have experience in because then you're you're kind of a closed cup. You're not open cup to what it could be. And so if you're picking things you only know, then you might know too much to be able to run the franchise. Well, how, do you, how do you feel about that kind of idea? That I don't know that it makes a huge difference if you don't know the industry. I put people in industries that they don't know, but that's one of the seven mistakes that I have uh, listed that you don't you want to watch out for is you may not know the industry, but before you get involved in that industry, get to know that industry. What makes it work? What's the business model like? How do they make profit? How do they make profit? How do they get their ROI? What's the long-term goals on that industry itself? So you don't necessarily uh, have to have an overwhelming passion for it. You don't necessarily necessarily have to know it on that, but get to know it before you invest uh, in any franchise in a different industry that you uh, know things about. Yeah. Well, well actually, I love listing. What are the top seven mistakes? Oh, let's see. Um, first of all, don't let what's in fashion cloud your judgment. Uh, just because it's out there and you see a whole line of people there, it uh, goes back to getting to know the industry and know that uh, know that industry well or well enough to know that you know where the profits are coming from on that one. So always get to know that. Uh, but if it's in, some of the times you can get into things that are, are, are fashionable or something like that, if it looks like it's going to be a long-term play. But get to know where the money comes from, what's their long-term solution. Uh, make certain that you have enough capital with whatever you get into. Each franchise system is going to have certain requirements for your net worth and your liquid. Uh, make sure you meet that. And then along the way, always make sure you talk to as many franchisees as possible. But you've got to talk to a lot of franchisees to validate all that information. Make certain there weren't any surprises, especially with the capital. Were there any expenditures that the franchise didn't tell you about that you had to come up with? Learn those things. 
get to know them. You make a lot of friends along the way too. That franchisor is going to help you grow, but all those people, those franchisees you talk to, they're going to help you grow as well. You will not be rich in a year or two, more than likely. So don't expect to be rich in a year or two. This will take time. It's not quite that simple to just walk right in and make a lot of money unless you just got real lucky. But uh, as I indicated, my people have done quite well, uh, but don't make that, don't have that expectation up front. Uh, funding. Funding's a good thing. Don't dismiss the funding. There are different ways to do it. You can use your own money and use other people's money. It just depends on personal preferences on there. But check and do funding to see if it's worthwhile. A lot of my investors love using other people's money on that one. Uh, and make use of free experts. So free experts out there. Local school chapter, as a matter of fact, is who I use. If people aren't familiar with that, S-C-O-R-E. Those are business people that have done business in your area for quite a number of years, generally retired. Great people to talk to. I ran a few of my different franchises by the local score chapter when I was doing that. Uh, but as you're talking to the funding people, ask them about it. Uh, my funding people will say which ones are doing well, which ones aren't on that because they'll know which ones are defaulting on their loans. So those are good free people. Chamber of Commerce. Always use free experts whenever possible. Yeah. Free, free intelligent experts. There's a lot of free experts and sometimes they're not eligible. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what's maybe the biggest lesson learned in building your own business? Uh, for me, <clears throat> my lesson learned in building my business was that uh, I wanted to do a business where uh, pretty much I was doing it myself on that. So when you're used to uh, going to a job, you used to go into a job site, you got your day planned out for you pretty much. You're getting the emails all day long. You've got the whole list of things to do. When you're an entrepreneur, it's you, whether it be a franchise, whether it be your own privately owned businesses, it's all up to you at that point in time. Now that franchise is going to give you a whole list of things to do. If you got your own business, you'll have a list of things to do. My biggest challenge was getting that list together, putting those priorities in order and not letting life get in the way. So I was working from home after, you know, 30 years in the corporate world. I had never been home all day long uh, for an extended length of time on that. When we were off on vacation, you know, days off from work, we were off on vacation somewhere else. So what I had to do was put together a list of things to do. Uh, and I broke mine down into like an hour by hour and sometimes half an hour by hour steps along the way what I needed to do, who I needed to call, appointments needed to be made, research this, do some marketing on that. With a franchise system, it's going to help you because they're, you're never going to be wondering or guessing what to do next. If you're doing it for your own private business, like we did with the uh, dry cleaning business, you've got to come up with a lot of those things yourself. So the main thing that I had to overcome was making certain that I had my day planned out, what I was going to do, when I was going to do it, so that I wasn't getting distracted by life. Well, I think that's fantastic. And I talk about this a lot on my channel. Is your uh, your time, you know, it's time long can never be found, right? It, it's your most valuable asset. You you have to manage it. You have to say no to lots of things, um, and and no to little things you might like to like say no to scrolling on shorts. Say, you know, except for our channel, of course. Say no to uh, you know Netflix at night. Re read a book on on entrepreneurship instead. Like say you know say no to. The, extra piece of cake and go for a walk instead like these little things micro little seconds they add up um, and you know and I, I just you know, I could go do, I've done shows on that plenty of the time he's, he's right have it said have a goal and cut all the crap that doesn't matter um, what kind of keeps you up at night though like you know what, what do you worry about from an entrepreneurial standpoint well, what I used to worry about, Thomas, was getting in front of enough people and getting enough people educated about franchising so I'd have a good flow of people in there. I no longer worry about that after getting my book done and being on wonderful shows like yours, Thomas, I, and then having all the people that I work with over 10 years. I don't. The one thing that does keep me up at night all the time that I always worry about is making certain that I put my people into the right franchise system where they succeed. So, Every night when I'm going for a walk, I pray that I there are no failures on my shift, that everybody that I put into franchising is successful. So that is the one thing that I'm always concerned about, that I always worry about. So I always try and, as your point was, in my spare time, get to know these different franchises. So I'm not doing that. Uh, I always want people to I never want to put somebody into a franchise that isn't a, a good fit for them. 
So that's my worries. I used to be that, you know, just getting people and just getting in front of people with my worries on that so that I could, you know, have enough people coming in to where I could help them. But now it's uh, really just worrying about my individual people. Yeah. And it took time too. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an investment you make in, in writing a book and time and promotions and all that things. But you can't write a really good book unless you really know the space. So I think, you know, if you're, you know, people are listening to Go check out the book. I think it's a great place to start for you. And you get, you get an insight on how to work with you, it sounds like, as well. So um, smart marketing. I'll give you five points for that. Good five dad points. You can keep those wherever you like. Um, what's your uh, top tip for anybody looking to get into entrepreneurship in general? Like, where, where, what do you think the top thing you would tell them to do? Franchising or not? Just, just I, I want to become my own boss. That's the statement, right? What do you, what, what's the tip you give them? Go on to Thomas's uh, YouTube page and I'll look <laughs> to his YouTube videos. They've got a lot of great information. So that was for Thomas. So for entrepreneurs out there, learn about entrepreneur. Get some books on it. There's many different books. My book is good. My book's going to be centered around franchising, not necessarily just entrepreneurship, but franchising specifically. Go find some books out there. As Thomas said, when you're going, you know, at night, instead of watching that movie, Pick up a book on entrepreneurship, different ones where people have done it. Uh, those That's probably the best way is to educate yourself and learn what other people have done, uh, good and bad. Yeah, educate yourself. And it could be, you know, go go see a speaker, go to a networking event, go go learn from others. And, and I don't mean to extend your, your tip, but you're, you're saying educate yourself in a way that actually enriches you beyond just pure entertainment and, and the more hours you cut out of entertainment, you'll be entertained by learning the, the craft to get that bigger goal, that drive that you talked about. And I think a big success factor in the people, you know, I, I've talked to hundreds of entrepreneurs and the ones that I can see that I know are going to make it are the ones that are, are talking to this hunger, this drive and doing everything possible. And that's their drive. You know, they're going to get to somewhere. It's going to be great. And you get the other ones who are, they're not as focused. They may be successful, but they won't reach their full potential because they're just, you know, and, and it's okay to have life balance. But if, you're, if you really want to get to where you think you want to go as a goal, you're going to have to continually learn and grow. And I think that's a fantastic step. So thank you. You fast forward a year. We're a year ahead now and you're looking back on your year. What are you most proud of? Uh, my people that make rookies of the year. I love them. When I hear about them, uh, that their first year was just great. And when they come back to me and they want to sell their franchise because they've made enough money to where they're good and they're moving on. Those are the things that, that I like to hear and that I want to hear. I think about that. So, you know, do you, you work in that capacity too? So if someone gets a franchise, you kind of hard work up and then do you go find the next person has a higher network that can go buy a, a completed franchise? <laughs> like, is that a model where it's, it's, they love then what I'm asking is, like, you know, I can see myself in this model, right? Where I, I do the hard work to set it up. It's got revenue coming in. Now I just want to kind of sell the asset so that I'm bored with it. Is, is that what people do? Yeah, quite uh, quite often, um, probably 50-50. A lot of them like to build up a legacy where they turn it over to their kids on that. And they really want their kids involved. I get quite a few people that say, I want my kids involved in this eventually. So we look mm -hmm. for franchises where, uh, where the, that can happen. Uh, sometimes they'll keep that one. They'll just, and again, you can get semi absentee franchises where the manager can run it for you. And you generally want whatever business you want to, you don't want that business to revolve around you because then you can't do whatever you want when you want. For entrepreneurs, whatever business it is, franchising, even if it's your own business, make sure it doesn't revolve around you. Um, but quite a few of my people will build it up and they'll want to sell it. Selling franchises is easy. Selling businesses that are making money is easy too. I got lots of people who look for businesses that are making money. Uh, on that. And that's what they want. They want a business that yeah. one make money, two doesn't revolve around the order on that one. So great way to go. Uh, wonderful. Uh, just make sure business doesn't revolve around you. And there's many different ways you can go. Uh, you know, just annuity. If you got it turned over to a manager, you got an annuity coming in on a regular basis. That's great. Um, the last question I'm going to ask you is how to get a hold of you and who should get a hold of you. So, so don't burn your hands on this question I'm about to ask you. If there's one question I should have asked, what was it? One question is that the one question I get from most people that they're not sure about is that when you and I are driving around Thomas, when we think of franchising, the first thing we think of is McDonald's, Taco Bell, Meineke, Mako. We don't realize that there are many different franchises 
in many different industries. You don't have to have a million dollars. You don't have to work at full time. There are service industries that are around $100,000, $150,000, make just as much or more than a brick and mortar that it costs you four dollars or $500,000 or more on that. So just keep in mind, industries, senior care, tutoring, home improvement, office cleaning, uh, you know, anything that you can think of, uh, restoration services. Think of Mike Rowe on dirty jobs. Any one of those jobs or businesses that he talks about, there's probably a franchise in there. You know, I, I look at those dirty jobs. I always ask myself this question. If my guy doesn't show up, am I going to want to jump in? If the answer is no, I'm not buying that franchise. <laughs> like, but the, well, it's something to consider, right? And, and there's a lot yeah. of factors of skilled labor versus this and, and licensed labor. So like if you buy an electrical services thing and somebody doesn't show up, you probably can't show up and go through it. You, you're going to have to go contract it. So that's a network of other you know people. But but I think it's a big consideration if you're there cleaning you know up carpets from you know a murder scene and that's what you do and if someone doesn't show up and you're the one cleaning the carpet that day, you better be prepared. To you got a franchise for that as well. Yes, I do. Hundred percent. I've looked yep. at it and I asked myself okay. that question. Like, I was like, no, I'm not going to be doing that one. No one yeah. in my family is going to jump in and help me either. Yeah. So that's a no go. That that one is killed. Yeah. Did you see what I did there? All right. That's words. How uh, who should get a hold of you, and why should they get a hold of you, and how should they get a hold of you? So uh, anybody that's thinking about getting into franchise, I'm all about education. Again, I'm not going to try and convince you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread because for some people it's just not. And we'll get to that point. Uh, so anybody interested in looking into franchise or learning more about it, don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, Thomas told me I had to keep these, uh, my answers to like two minutes or less. Uh, so I've been doing it short, but I can tell you, you know, I'll talk as much as you want to on that. Get a hold of me, franchisemaven.com. That's franchise, M A V is in Victor, E N.com. Uh, you can go out there, you can get my book. You can buy my book on Amazon if you want. I'd love you to buy my book on Amazon, but you don't have to. You can get a free copy off my webpage. Just go there. Uh, Greg at franchisemaven.com, or just pick up the phone and give me a call at 361. 361- Seven seven two six four zero one. I love that. I always share my number too. And the truth is, it's crazy when I do get a text and I reply. People are like, "Oh, you actually?" Reply. I'm like, "Yeah, that's why I gave it out." <laughs> so I'm like, like you know, uh, I always love those companies that like you can never get a hold of the CEO, and I get it. But the ones that do, and they actually like, you know, someone from their office actually picks up, like, "Hey, hold." Holy cow. Like you how, talk about brand awareness. So thank you for sharing that, by the way. And, and uh, it just, you know, I love the idea of franchise. It's, it's a bit scary for people. I know I'm acknowledging that, um, you know, it's probably the most expensive thing you're buying outside of a house. But, and, and this doesn't often have equity. And, and I think picking the right consultant, you know, it doesn't cost you to have a consultant. So, so just know that anybody out there, like, you know, he's not collecting money from you. And if you are going to pay somebody, you're, you've got the wrong consultant. You've been scammed. Stop. Um, but it's so important to have the right person guide you on this trip because you're, you're laying out a lot of capital that you that maybe could be used for a lot of things. And your intentions are good. And you can go pick the right person who really actually cares about you and it cares about you becoming. You notice how, I know how you said, I, I'm caring about the people being rookie of the year. Which means you're thinking in the future about someone else's well-being and someone else's success, and you do that for probably two reasons. One, it sounds, it sounds, you know, just getting to know you a little bit, you know, for camera. And you're a good soul that actually cares. And two, in your own business model, that's the that's the secret to success. Is that oh, I use Greg, and Greg helped us find the right franchise. My other friend who might be affluent, I'm going to call Greg. And, and that's a smart business model. And if you're running your own franchise, by the way, that's the right idea. If I'm going to serve this food or I'm going to clean this carpet or I'm going to cut this grass or fix that electric box, I want to do it in a way and I want people to be in a way that those people talk about me a year from now is, is something that, man, that thing, was, they were so easy to work with. And so anyway, I'll get off my pedestal, but I think, I think you're, <laughs> wow. you're, you're, um, it's the right way to be. So thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Thomas. Very kind. And of anybody you. who's made it to this point in the show, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, this was your first time. I hope you learned something and I hope you come back and learn more. Uh, and if you've been here before, you know, thank you as well. Like, listen, the, the show is growing great and I appreciate everyone's support to do this. Uh, 
if like, you know, I always ask this, you know, if it's so important for the five-star reviews on our podcast and for you to, you know, to maybe give a follow on youtube.com at never been promoted, get out there, do these things that helps the community, helps the guests and helps us spread the mission to help a million entrepreneurs get better at entrepreneurship until we meet again, uh, go out there and unleash your entrepreneur. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the never been promoted podcast. If you liked today's show, subscribe at youtube.com forward slash at never been promoted. Until next time, get out there and go unleash your inner entrepreneur. Thanks again to instantlyrelevant.com for producing the show, all the social media, all the content, posts, articles, everything. Could not do it without you. Instantlyrelevant.com. Check it out. They're awesome. Once again, instantlyrelevant.com.